MLS invited me to their new massive Apple TV studio. We got to watch them do their thing and it was cool, but we had a job to do. We had to ask them the important questions. I believe that we will win. Is that a cringe champ? Listen, listen to me, I, I love America. Uh, you, America, you have an adopted son here, but a lot of the shouts are very cringe. What is the most cringe in your opinion? I believe that we will win, unacceptable. What did uh, Bradley Wright Phillips say? Yes. He said yes, then I'll say it's a great chant because he's wrong. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that is a chant that has had its moment. And if you want to do it, you go right ahead. But I think we can find a better chant with some uh, group think and some time on our hands. For a soccer stadium? A little bit, no? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I like passion. I don't know if I, if I would, would go there, you know? Is it football or soccer? Football, 100%. I'm so sorry, but it's football. When I hear my son, like, I always say football because I am from Venezuela. My kid that is five years old and he was born here, he always said, Mom, today, do we have soccer to eat? No, <laughs> don't say soccer, please. Football. 100% <laughs> football. But you hear me on the 360 show, sometimes I say soccer to, to accommodate my, my American cousins, let's say, but it's football. If I say that I used to play football, people are like, they look at my body, they're like, there's no way you play football. They can't understand, they're like, there's no way you play football. I'm like, no, I played the real football, not that, the egg-shaped football. Oof. Um, can I give two answers or you just edit them so I can appeal to everyone? I'm going to say, I think it's, I think it's soccer. Why? Uh, because I'm an ugly American and I grew up playing soccer, and my kids play soccer. Did the MLS pay you to say that? No. It, are they paying people, though? Because <laughs> if, they, if they're paying people to say it, I'll say it like five more times if you want. I mean, it's definitely, it's soccer. It's soccer. Are you banking all of these? Uh, yes. Okay, good. No, we're, we're, right. Just keep rolling. Yes. It'll be perfect. It's both. It's both. Do you know what? We could call it football, call it calcio. It's, again, this is, this is what we love. You, you find a way to make a goal, you find a ball if you don't have one, or you make your own ball, and you find a way to play. It's the global game for a reason. It's whatever you want to call it. The beauty of the game is that anyone, anywhere on this globe, on this rock, can love it, and odds are probably does love it. I will call it soccer. I will make jokes about football if you come call football to me in the United States, but I won't, I won't take it against you. I always say football because my native language is Spanish, so it comes naturally, you know? I, sometimes I try to put soccer in there, but usually I go with football, so they don't bet it. Would the MLS get mad if you said football on air? The MLS would probably get, I would get more mad if I said the MLS, but no, they would accept it. They would just look at me funny because I've never said that before in my life. I'm not English. The beauty is you don't have to pretend to be anything. And what you didn't catch was he was making fun of me for saying the MLS. Couldn't help myself. Yeah. No, I think that we have to teach people. You have to teach people. Yes, the right way. So if I say soccer, <laughs> if I say soccer, I'm wrong. It's okay to, mm. you know, I think that there's no hate. But your son He plays, plays soccer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I get a free pass because I can say that it's slip by mine, you know? Oh, yeah, I was yeah, yeah. going to my, to my native language, so yeah, I, I, do, I do football a lot. Okay. Why is there no pro-rel in the United States, and will it ever happen? Why is there no pro-rel? Well, the league was started in a different direction, and that was the direction that the owners chose. I don't think it'll change, and with 29 teams and counting, I doesn't break my heart. Pro rel. Promotion and relegation. Oh, that's what you call it? You Americans always do stuff like that. I was looking like, pro rel, should I know this? Is this, is this like, I, I would say it's got to do with money, right? For me, it has to be, can only be money. I think everywhere else is, is relegation and promotion. So I don't want to get too much into that. I'm not really sure of the ins and outs, but it can only come down to money for me. Fair enough. I, I love that. I love that system. I, and maybe it's just because I, I root for so many teams that are terrible. Um, so I want the last few weeks of the season to be like really interesting. It would be great if that last three weeks we're just like live and die on every moment uh yeah it, it's probably not gonna happen but yeah it'd be great if it did is the mls a retirement league the mls is not a retirement league look how i just gave you some credit using the mls i would like to retire as an mls employee hopefully i'm doing this season pass stuff till i literally croak it is my passion but no mls is not a retirement league no no way do you know why i do but they don't we have tiago almada we have Diego Gomez, and they both qualified their team to the Olympics, and they are under 23. So it's not a retirement league. 
You see? That's what I'm telling you. Oh, no. I, I, listen, I, I think you can make that argument years ago. I'll put it this way. Watching Messi last year, did it look like a guy who was ready to retire? It looked like a guy who cared. Uh, I love the fact that like his teammates are taking penalties, and he's sitting there living and dying in every moment, and he's going out there, and it mattered. And he played hard, and he was brilliant. So, not a retirement league. I think he makes everyone rethink how, the, how you look at this league. What is one thing you didn't know about soccer in the United States before you got here? I would say how Major League Soccer rosters are constructed. <laughs> that's, that's you the learned thing. that. You I mean, actually forget, know. Forget Pythagoras' theorem, you know, there's, there's elements to... No, it can be complicated at times, but I completely understand it and I value why it's done that way. We run in a calendar that's, that's totally against the European calendar, which benefits Major League Soccer for many reasons. So I think the way we operate, we're proud of and we just run with it and let everyone else adjust. I always think I should have came earlier. I wish I knew about MLS soccer two or three years before. I think I was fortunate enough to have a, a very good career, but I always think, what if I came at 24, 25? Um, what would that look like? You know, what does the goal scoring record look like? And, and, and these things, do I have a chance to win an MLS Cup? So just explore a bit more, a little bit earlier in the young age. What's one thing that you know now about the United States that you didn't know when you came over here? That you, you guys put bacon and cheese in everything. That's what I've learned. Bacon and cheese is in everything. Brussels sprouts, like anything. <laughs> it's crazy. Is that the best thing you've learned about the U.S. No. since you got here? The best thing I've learned about the U.S. is it doesn't matter who you are, there's an opportunity. It's, your dreams can be fulfilled in America. It's, it's unbelievable. Even me, in England, I'd say me, not mediocre, but a decent player lost in my career. I come here, all of a sudden my number's retired. Little old me, you know, so... Yeah, not much because my mother's from Chicago. Oh. My ma's from Chicago, so shytown town boy here in many ways. My second home has always been Chicago, even though I live in Atlanta. So not a whole lot, you know, I was the guy in school who would talk about having peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and everyone's looking at me, what are you talking about peanut butter and jelly sandwiches? Great choice. Uh, or I'd have, I'd have little sisters back in Ireland, two little sisters, that, and I'd say, oh, I had to change a diaper. And they'd say, a diaper? It's a nappy. So there's all sorts of different words you adjust to. Do you ever accidentally speak English in your Spanish broadcasts or do you ever accidentally speak Spanish on your English broadcasts? For sure. I love to use Spanish words in English broadcasts and I love to use English words in the Spanish broadcast. <laughs> we, like, people from South America who live in Miami, we speak Spanglish, you know, like Sofia Vergara. So we are allowed to use the Spanglish everywhere. Are you the MLS version of Sofia Vergara? No, I wish. I wish to have her money. <laughs> <laughs> but well, let's see. What's your followers? Mm -hmm. What do you think about me? Can I be your Sofia Vergara? Let me know. It's kind of a mix up right up here. Usually try to stay cool and calm when I delivering. When I'm delivering, I usually do this most in Spanish. So yeah, some English words slip in. And then the other way around, I think I I try to be more careful even when I'm doing English, so, but it sometimes it slips. Can the United States ever win the World Cup? Yes. Why, why compete if you don't think you can? What's the point of doing all this if the goal is not to win the biggest prize? Are we ready to win the World Cup right now as a nation? Maybe not this second. I hope in 2026 we can sort of force our way into that conversation, but the United States, Canada, North America in general, what are we doing within this game if we aren't looking around saying, why not us? When you think about what the U.S. have now as 2026 approaches and the top young talent coming through, it's a really exciting time. Do you call it differently because you know Americans are listening? No, would you stop? Are you joking me right now? If I could hit you right now, maybe I would. <laughs> I want to joke. No, no, absolutely not. The global game is the global game. It's beautiful, and we are so excited to kick off MLS this season. You've been working at MLS a long time. Were you the first MLS fan? If I wasn't, I was among the first to really coalesce around the current MLS culture of being far too active on Twitter and caring far too much about the minutiae of a league that uh, many people can't quite wrap their minds around, but I think if they just gave it a chance, they would truly love. Then are you one of the few people that actually understands the roster rules of MLS? Do we need to do this on camera? I could sit you down over there, take you through all the bullet points. We could train you up. You could be my Padawan, but I can't promise how many years that would take for oh, you to get okay. to a Is there like an estimate? Level amount of time that would take oh, over there? Oh, well, it depends on the level of expertise you want to get to. If you want to walk, I think we could do that in two weeks. If you want oh, to okay. run, you're going to have to come live with me. 
Can the MLS ever be the best league in the world? There's no question. There's no, there's no reason why not. Will it be in the next five, ten years? Absolutely not. These things take time. And I think with the improvements that I've seen since I've been involved in the league since 2012, it is remarkable to think about where we are now versus where I was then. It's just so cool to see young talents coming through. You, you see the links to Redondo joining Inter Miami right now, a player that is sought after from top teams all around the world that's choosing to go to Inter Miami and play with Lionel Messi, his compatriot. So to see the young talent, Miguel Almiron in 2018, winning a cup with Atlanta United, heading across to Newcastle and starring in the Premier League, that's happening more and more and more. It used to be this big headline act, not anymore. Now you do a lot of work in ice hockey, the blue card was recently introduced as an idea by FIFA. Do you think it would be a good idea? It's very similar to what they have in ice hockey Very already. similar, right? Take someone off, have a little, I mean, is it, would there be a penalty box? I'm assuming it would just be a little painted sin bin. See, I, I, I think you gotta dress it up a little bit. Okay, what, uh, what, what's your ideal box? Well, then? I mean, I think it's gotta be right next to the crowd. It basically has to be in the crowd, like the penalty okay. box in hockey. Yes. You have to sit right there. You have to have lunatics hit, tap it on the glass and heckling you throughout. Uh, and then it's worth it. Otherwise, uh, I don't know, it's just a painted area. No, it's just, it's, it doesn't it's, do it. It's not working. Does it ever get awkward because you're one of the only Americans that's on camera for the MLS season pass? My whole thing is awkward. Yeah, like I, I live in awkward situations constantly. I think you just have to be comfortable being like embarrassed constantly and uh, having people kind of look at you like you don't know what you're talking about and, and just battle through it. You, you, you gotta grind. And I respect your grind. What is the most embarrassing situation you got put into because you're one of the Americans here? Oh, wow. It, it definitely was lingo based with uh, BWP. I think he was hitting me with something from, uh, do you know the Netflix show Top Boy? That's a very, it's a no. very British show. Uh, so they'll know it. Yeah, very British show. Uh, and he was hitting me with a lot of lingo from that. And I was trying to play along. Um, you, you can't really play along. But, you know, in typical fashion, I tried to. Oh, respect. Uh, I tried yeah. to, yeah, just ad lib my way through that, and it, it didn't work. So I, I binge watched two seasons of it. Was it good? Oh, it was excellent. Yeah. And, and now I feel like BWP and I, uh, we can make other people feel awkward in oh. a similar style. So, you know, it was worth it That's just nice. for that. Yeah, thank you. It's been a pleasure. Yep. Appreciate it.